I'd like to thank the Las Vegas Raiders for making this video possible by taking Alex Leatherwood in the first round. I had a feeling that I was going to have to do a film breakdown on him, but now I don't have to. So Dylan Radins, to me, is a first round caliber tackle. He's got 34 inch arms. Usually the threshold that you look for is 32 inches, um, and he puts that arm length to use in pass protection. He's got the ability to move that really helps him keep his feet square in pass pro, and it also helps him for zone blocking. Uh, and he has the mentality to drive people to the ground and finish blocks. So let's start with pass blocking. Dylan Radins wins pass blocking reps with two aspects of his game. He's got great footwork and he wins the hand fight by creating and extending his length advantage. So look at how he starts his pass set. He's got a great kick step. He covers a lot of ground fast. He has his knees bent, his back flat, his feet are square and his head's up and he doesn't lean or lose balance. Honestly, the first two seconds of this play is enough to say that he's an upgrade over Dennis Kelly in my opinion. When you watch Dylan Radins use his hands, the main thing that sticks out is patience. He has a great combo of making contact early, but also letting the rusher declare his intentions first and then react off of that. So the defender is going to punch down the middle and his outside hand is swinging up. So he's clearly trying to club this outside hand and bend around the edge. What Radins is going to do is first he's going to punch with the inside hand to neutralize that initial jab, but most importantly he knows he's got to protect the outside and that means making first meaningful contact. And this is where length and being quick with your hands is so important because in pass rush situations the person who makes the first meaningful contact wins 9 times out of 10. Raidens is really good about locking his elbow right when he makes contact to really maximize his length advantage and the pop of his hand punch. Throughout the entire pass set, he keeps his knees bent and his feet active and he's square with the defender. He's not leaning or setting himself up to get beat on the inside move. Let's look at this other play. The defender's going to punch with both hands and then pull back with his inside hand to try some sort of counter to the outside. And once you engage with Dylan Radins as a pass rusher, he's going to take advantage of any weakness that you make available to him. So when the defender pulls back to the inside, Radins splits his body down the middle and does a kind of push-pull technique where he's pulling on the outside hand and pushing on the chest, making sure that the inside hand doesn't become a factor. Number 27 here is going to start out with a little inside hesitation to keep Raiden's relatively square with the line of scrimmage and keep his outside hand available. And then he's going to swipe his outside hand before he attacks the edge to try to get an advantage that way. But then watch Raiden's recovery. He immediately punches back with the outside hand to make sure he doesn't lose the contact race and then punches the inside hand under the armpit and then gathers his feet, gets them square to the defender. That's really what you see pretty consistently from Dylan Radins in pass protection. He gave up zero sacks in 2019, but the competition was significantly worse than other tackles in the class. If college to the NFL is stepping up one level, FCS to the NFL is stepping up probably one and a half levels. So you just kind of have to ask what are his strengths and will they translate to the next level? And then what are his weaknesses and will they get exposed to the next level? We've talked about the arm length. I think he'll have no problem on that front. His footwork, his ability to stay light on his feet and keep them square. There's no reason to me that that won't translate. And I really don't see anything in pass pro that Radins is good at that he can't be good at at the NFL. I think where he might struggle is with power rushers because his anchor isn't that great and he's only 304 pounds. The edge rushers that he was going up against weren't really bull rushing him or powering through him, but there's a few times you see his anchor kind of barely holding up that make you think like, okay, yeah, Miles Garrett's probably knocking you over. But let's look at when Dylan Radins does lose in pass pro, which was not often at all. Out of 349 pass blocking snaps that I watched, I found three times where I could say Dylan Radins got beat. So if we look here, the defender's gonna swipe the outside hand and lower the shoulder. And what gets him beat here is mainly footwork. When he starts to get attacked to the outside, he bends his waist and then leans into the defender instead of keeping his feet square with them. And that lets the defender bend around the edge. Right here, we've got really good hand usage. He makes first contact, he protects the outside, 
but he lets the defender get lower pad level, he doesn't keep his knees bent, he narrows his base, and he gets beat on the counter to the inside. And then here's a combination of letting the defender control the inside hand and not getting a low enough pad level. I don't want you to think that me going over a few wins and then a few losses means that Dylan Radins is like a mixed bag when it comes to pass blocking. I just like to kind of go over how a player wins and then how a player loses in one-on-one -on -one situations. And like I said, those are literally the only three losses that I could find on his tape. When you watch Raiden's run block, it's pretty obvious why the Titans would have him high on their board. He's tailor-made to reach block and play outside zone. The great hand usage and understanding of angles and leverage that you see in pass pro show up in run blocking as well. North Dakota State runs a lot of outside zone and Raiden's number one has the athleticism to take that quick lateral step to start out. And then he also has the length and coordination to attack the outside shoulder and seal off defenders. This flexibility and the way that he can get to spots when he needs to is something that Tennessee hasn't really even had at right tackle. Kind of like how Caleb Farley came from a defensive scheme that runs a ton of single high man coverage, you can tell Tennessee's front office is saying, let's minimize the learning curve as much as we possibly can as far as drafting guys who are already familiar with the kind of stuff that we like to run. The one area where I'd really say Raidens needs to improve in run blocking is being in better control when he moves to the second level. There's a lot of times that he'll move down the field to block a linebacker and he'll either take a poor angle or he'll kind of lose his balance and not really secure the block like he needs to. Raidens is really good at multitasking. He's always looking for work. If he finishes a block or he doesn't have anyone in front of him, he doesn't just stand around and occupy his area. He's always looking for some way to help out. And even though he sometimes struggles when he's targeting guys at the second level, he's great at kind of pinballing around to multiple defenders within a short area. He's also someone that has the mentality to finish blocks and drive guys either into the ground or off the field. Overall, I'm really happy with this pick in the second round. I had him as a late first round prospect, so I think it's great value at a position of need. It's unfortunate to have to spend such a high draft pick at the same position two years in a row, but the situation kind of is what it is, and hopefully Dylan Radins can be a silver lining to the Isaiah Wilson situation.